Good morning and welcome to the Climate Summit. Thank you ever so much for registering and coming along the first thing in the morning. I'm Claire O'Connor and I'll be the chair of today's session. I'm the head of policy, performance, analysis and communications, which I think can agree is a bit of a long catchy title. I'm very lucky to have within my team officers working on climate change, who is one of the many actions they've been working on recently is this week's summit. This morning's session is the launch session and is focused on why are we doing this? The aim of this morning is for you to learn more about what the Council is doing to address climate change and why it is important for us to work together to address climate change now. Our speakers, which we're really pleased to have us have with us this morning, are Councillor Kabindia, the leader of the Council, Councillor O'Brien, who's our Cabinet Member for Finance, Resources and Climate Sustainability, Emma Jones, who's a City Region Network Coordinator at Ashton, a London-based climate change strategy charity. The format of today's session will be that each of our speakers will speak in turn and then we will have a Q&A session at the end. As we are using Teams Live to ask questions, please type them into the chat on the right hand side of your screen. Our aim is to answer as many questions as we can. We won't be live streaming the questions, but we are keeping a note of all of them and we'll publish some questions as we go along to give you a bit of a feed about what's being asked. So that we may cover as many questions as possible, we may also group the questions together in the Q&A. So if you don't see your question published or asked, please don't worry. As, I've, as I have said, they are all being captured. But do be mindful that when questions are published, whatever name you use and whatever wording you use will appear. You can also turn on closed captioning by pressing the three dots on the menu bar and selecting turn on closed captions. At the end of today's event, please write your pledges in the chat. These are the changes you pledge to make as a result of today's session. Thank you for joining us. and We really hope that you find this session useful and will result in some changes to help us with our environment. And now I'm going to introduce our first speaker, Councillor Gabindia, Leader of the Council. Thank you. Good, good morning and, and thank you Ms O'Connor and, and other, other officers for both setting this up morning's event up and of course this uh, events have been going on now for a couple of days and, and for also introducing me and setting the tone for this morning's session. You asked the question about why are we doing this on a Thursday, Wednesday morning at 8.30 in the morning because in fact climate change is a global challenge but but we can do something about it which is why we are here to do something about it <clears throat> climate change is the biggest long-term challenge we as a society face it impacts across the society but also with solutions that involve the whole of the society Fossil fuels that created the climate change are embedded into the foundations of everything we do and to shift away from it will be a huge undertaking and will require everyone to do something about it. Whilst there are many solutions that will need huge scale or actions at national and global levels, we too as individuals can take action. <clears throat> Reducing our own carbon emission and becoming more sustainable is something that each one of us can do something about. And there is a lot at a local government level and at a, at a local organization and local community level that we can do to use less energy, to use uh, zero carbon energy sources and reduce the impacts of things we buy and consume. Now we have choices to make about how much we travel and how we travel. We have choices to make about how we look after our garden and green spaces in order to enhance biodiversity or not to enhance biodiversity. Those are choices for us to make. In UK, our own carbon, as a country, our carbon emissions per person are far, far higher than those in many other poorer countries. And you know, I have traveled around, particularly Africa, where I've seen that poor communities with a very, very low carbon footprint are actually incredibly aware of the threats and the challenge of climate change. And in fact, each one will do something about managing that change. And in fact, being able to rise above that change and threat. The first step 
about climate change is to start to talk about it. In a sense, understanding the problem, in a sense, is the key thing. You know, knowing the ailment will find us the solution. And so, as Catherine Ho Hayho says, the most important thing to, we can do to fight climate change is to talk about it. And that is exactly what we intend to do today and in the next couple of days. <clears throat> the pandemic has posed us immediate challenges and, and we need to overcome that. But also it's given us a time to reflect and think about what is it that we are doing to our world and how we can do something in order to reverse that change and get over some of the damage that the, that the world has been, uh, been for, damage that the world has had. <clears throat> what are the threats to Wandsworth if we don't uh, uh, do something about climate change? You know, people ask this thing that this is such a big and global thing and therefore, well, I don't really know what I can do about it. And I don't know what is going to happen to my local neighbourhood if, if the temperature goes up by X percent or not. Well, the truth is that we are a river borough. We have rivers running through our borough. We have a river at the northern end of our borough. Climate change would affect the water levels in that river. That would affect flooding. I mean, a large part of the north part of the borough is in fact in the floodplain. And the flood threat to northern bits of Wandsworth is very real. And that is direct result of the changing climates in this country. Heat waves, <clears throat> and you know, we have ourselves experienced heat waves in the, in the summer months, uh, extremely dry summer last year and extremely dry winter so last year. And, and whatever impact of that on the garden, I mean, the gardeners will know. Those it, heat wave causes some of our vulnerable people the most difficult things. They un, cannot cope with rising temperature. The mortality amongst particularly elderly people as a result of heat that they cannot cope with is rising. And that is a real and genuine threat both in the borough and in our own communities. And the changes in the biodiversity, you know, the grass gra dies off, you know, birds and bees don't have enough grubs to feed on. That is the change to the biodiversity in our own backyard that, that, that climate change poses a threat to. And that is the effect in Wandsworth, and that is why we must do something about it. So you may ask also, what has the council done about it? Well, the council has recognised this, and you know, there may be those who say too late, but actually, let me be absolutely honest. When it became a critical issue for us as a community, we made sure that we grabbed that opportunity and declared and did something as thoroughly and fully as we can. So in 2019, <coughs> we declared a climate change emergency and set ourselves the ones of environment and sustainability strategy. Like everything we do in Wandsworth as a council, we don't just talk about it. We set ourselves challenging targets. We set ourselves the target to deliver, monitor, measure and set a further challenging targets. And that is exactly what the action plan that is embedded in the ones with environment and sustainability strategy does. Each year that action plan will be reviewed. Uh, reasons found as to why we succeeded, why we didn't succeed, what can we do to change the, the pace, of ch pace of delivery. And, and, and that is a something that we have committed ourselves to do. And it is something for the community in Wandsworth to hold us to account for. The council's declaration is to be carbon neutral by 2030, which is not a long way away. I mean, in the scale of things, just under just over two administrations of this council and and and, and ones that will be as a council will be carbon neutral. Our commitment is to be the greenest in the London borough. Now, I have had sort of people saying, well, so many, so other boroughs also want to be that. Well, let's have a challenge. Let's have a competition. And you know, if, if we are the second greenest because somebody has beaten to it, us to it, that's fine by me. So long as we are all traveling in the same aim to become as green as possible. Because once it isn't an island on its own, we are surrounded our, by our neighbors and we live in a city which also aims to be green. We all need to pay, put the challenge to ourselves and then work hard to deliver it. <coughs> and it's not just about carbon reduction, which obviously is an important part of the strategy to tackle climate change. But there are other things we should do and we can do. You know, there are there are things about you know, 
how many trees to plant, what trees to plant, how to look after them, how to recycle, what to recycle, how to ensure that we consume less. Waste reduction is just, just as important as waste recycling. And finally, I'd say that as we all surrounded by the threats and da damage, da dangers of COVID, whether there is a vaccine or not, whether the times will return to normal or not, the council has started to think also about what happens post COVID. And the most important thing in the post COVID recovery embedded in our smart growth strategy is that Wandsworth will be a greener borough, that Wandsworth will be a fairer borough. Those two ambitions are very, very important. They are fundamental to our recovery. They are fundamental to our future and they take on board the, the commitment we made in July 2019 that climate emergency requires us to take drastic and emer emergency action. We have taken that and we have made sure that action informs our future, informs what we do uh, as we go along. I'm very proud to have been part of that debate and discussion in Wandsworth and in the Wandsworth community as a whole, to have both support, supported that change and move towards recognizing the threat of climate change and coming up with a plan of action to deliver it. And I stand ready to be challenged against the delivery promises we have made. And with where we fail, do challenge, but also remember, we will want to improve on our record continuously. Thank you very much for this morning's attention. attention. I hope those of you who spend the whole day find that the, the summit is both enjoyable and helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councillor Govindia. Now, just before I quickly, quickly before I pass on to our next speaker, I just want to let you know, don't hold on to the end for your questions. I can't quite believe I'm saying this, but please start putting your questions in the chat. Um, we want to see them coming through and that way we can make sure we ask them in the Q&A session. So if you've got questions in your head now, oh, I can see some coming through. That's fantastic. Um, if you've got questions in your head, don't wait to the end. Just pop them in the chat now so that we, um, we've we got lots of questions um, to ask at the end. Um, so get typing as well as listening and watching. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass on to our next speaker. Councillor O'Brien, who's our Cabinet Member for Finance, Resources and Climate Change Sustainability, who's going to talk about what we as a councillor are doing and have done, and also the importance of everybody taking action. Thank you so much, Councillor. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, thank you to Emma Jones for joining us this morning, and thank you to all for um, attending. As um, Councillor Govindia set out I think very clearly and succinctly why we declared a climate emergency and why we are taking this action. Um, and I'd like to go on just in a little bit more detail to talk about our vision for net zero and what this means in practice for Wandsworth at um, a local level. As Councillor Govindia alluded to, um, we recognised from the outset um, the need for urgency. Um, and so at the same time, uh, if we can move the slide on, that would be wonderful. Um, at the same time as declaring our climate emergency and then um, um, publishing our strategy, within a, sh a few short months, we had also uh, committed to an annual action plan within, uh, within, within six months of that de declaration. Now, we'll start our 2030 carbon neutral target relates to our own operations. We recognise that our emissions are a meaningful, but only a small percentage of the total emissions in Wandsworth, as you see there in the graph, 3% um, of the total. So part one of our plan and our strategy is getting our own house in order so that we become carbon neutral as an organisation by 2030. Not only to meet our own obligations to do so, but also to show leadership um, in those actions. But it is really part two that is the hardest part of our action plan uh, and the most important part, because it's really about what we can do to create the conditions needed for change to happen across the borough. And that's why the action plan emphasizes an increase in community engagement and working with others across Wandsworth to build a greener and more sustainable borough. 
and to do what we can to influence the reduction of emissions across um, both, uh, whether it be um, the residential sector, domestic businesses, or others who contribute uh, to that, that borough emission total that you see uh, before you. And that's why we're here, really. That's why we have a climate summit. Councillor Govindia talked about the need to talk about this as an issue. That, that in itself is important. And I think we recognise that we alone will not be able to drive that change. We can influence it uh, and we can create the conditions for change to happen. But it is really important that we have influencers. Uh, we have people who can be agents for change, who within their own networks can make that change happen. And that's really the benefit of today and those of you who are attending, whether you are simply a resident with um, an introductory sort of interest in the area. You will obviously have friends, neighbours, family within the borough who you can who you can tell about the importance of what we're doing. You may already be an organisation active in the space who have members that you can bring bring with us and take action. Or you may be an employer um, where you see the benefits of working in a more sustainable way and the impact that can have on the borough, as well as the benefits to you. And and we really really want to make sure that we um, do our part through events like this to, to, to leverage those networks. I thought it'd be useful and what I'd like to do in, 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 the, in, the rest of my, um, in the rest of my speech is actually just to, as we move on to the next slide, talk about um, what we're doing and some of the highlights of this year, just to give a real uh, example, if you like, of um, what, what does this really mean. I start um, with our seven themes um, of our environmental and sustainability strategy. Um, I won't go through each here, instead I'll draw them out in the examples, but um, what you can see really is that we have tried to structure an action plan which also matches, if you think back to the previous slide, where you know the, the, the large uh, emitting parts of the borough, whether that be um, domestic en um, energy, electricity and gas, or, or, or business or transport, we, we have tried to match our action areas to where, um, where we find emissions and where we can hopefully have our biggest impact. So as we move on and, and look then uh, on the next slide into the highlights of 2020, I, I, I want to take a moment to acknowledge, and I suppose we're, all, we're, we're, we're 15 minutes into, um, into this, uh, event and nobody has mentioned COVID uh, and I'm, I'm going to because the impact of COVID in 2020 for everybody individually has been has been huge and, and it has been a huge impact obviously for us too as a local authority as we have had to react to this emergency and doing our part to respond and support residents. It would have been easy as I'm sure has happened elsewhere to put our climate ambitions to one side um, it, in 20, you know, it's not the time. There are more important things to be going on. So I'm really delighted that that was not the case. That's in no small part due to um, the fact that by the beginning of this year, we have assembled um, a dedicated climate change team who are within our own organisation, drivers for change and for action, and who have kept us working towards um, our goals. And, and I, I, I thank them for the work they've done, not only this year, but in also in putting this event together. And I suppose the first thing um, that is worth noting as a highlight and, and is critical to the success over the next 10 years is the baselining of our emissions. Because in order for us to take action that is based on climate science, we need to know what our carbon emissions are. And so we this year have completed our baselining of carbon emissions as an organisation and are using these as um, our basis for an approach to reaching carbon uh, new neutrality. So in analysing our emissions as a borough, it's highlighted that over 40% of borough's emissions comes from domestic energy use. And, and, and so that, that for us is a, is a real flag and a highlight as to where some of the biggest change needs to happen. At the same time, um, one of the things I hope you hear about as you attend events and as, as you look more into this and as we speak more is um, the co-benefits of this agenda. And Councillor Give India touched on it. But um, it's our belief that as we take action to reach our carbon emissions target, the kind of things that we will change will also hopefully make this um, a better borough to live in. 
more pleasant borough. And I think the Love to Garden campaign of this year is a great example of that. Um, not only is it an opportunity for our residents to sort of reappreciate the natural world, but you know, it looks at and looked at the relationship between gardening and mental health on the one hand, and also the importance of gardens in, in helping biodiversity and air pollution in, in our communities. Um, it helps it help both with noise and in, in terms of you know looking at the issue of noise and pollution from the roads, but emphasizes the use of front gardens as a green space instead of a driveway, and hopefully as a means of encouraging a more sustainable ways of um, of travel and the impact that that um, driving in and uh, carbon emitting car use can have on the borough. So that was one campaign. As we as we move on to to other things that have happened in February, we approved plans um, to transition the entire council electricity to purchasing 100 percent zero carbon energy, and we're taking a further action to decarbonize its operations, including audits across the entire state and exploring options for the electrification of heating. If we move on to the next slide, please. And we're also helping residents reduce their carbon footprint along with their energy bills. Um, under a very, very tight timeline, uh, we were delighted last month to secure over £500,000 of funding through the Green Homes local a grant local authority delivery scheme to deliver energy efficient upgrades to low income homes. And whilst that delivery, the delivery time is also tight by the end of March 2021, we're keen to ensure that when funding is being made available, that as a council, we're making every effort, every effort available to secure it, uh, to support our dark decarbonisation work across the borough. And so that's an important part of our plan to, to help secure the funding to make these things happen. Because ultimately, um, without, without the funding and without the resources, it will be very difficult to achieve all we want to do. And as we move on to the, the next um, part of our slide, we, we, I would also like to touch on, I think, something that's really, really important to us, um, which is driving our um, sustainable transport transition. Sorry, could you switch the slide, thanks? Thank you. Um, we have over 560 EV charging points in the borough, and we have another 140 lamppost sockets on the way with further installations planned in 2021. We want uh, Wandsworth to really be um, a leader for um, the, 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 the use, the ownership of uh, electric vehicles. We want to recognise that whilst we will encourage and support modal shifts to other sustainable ways of, of transport, which are important, whether that be you know, pedestrianisation, whether that be supporting cycling. We want to recognise that people will want to use cars and do use cars. And where they do, we want to make it as easy as possible to, uh, to do so in Wandsworth. And many of you will have seen the news overnight in terms of um, the national government's commitment to, to phasing out um, carbon intensive vehicle use by, by 2030. So we're in line with, with that strategy and I'd like to think we're already ahead, ahead of it. Um, we have the highest take up rate of club, club, car club membership in the country uh, and we want to want to do more in that space. In terms of electric vehicle use, eight years ago we had between 100 and 200 uh, electric vehicle users. As you can see now we have over um, uh, 5,000 and this will become even more important um, with the rollout of the um, ULES charging zone next year. It will be in everybody's interest um, to, um, to move to electric vehicle car use when they can. On the next slide, um, uh, we, we, we acknowledge as well now with a look more towards the future, given the impact of this year, um, that local businesses are the backbone of our local economy and uh, the heart of our communities. And we're going to you know, have to support our local economy, our local town centres, as we uh, come out of COVID. They have had an incredibly, um, incredibly difficult year. Um, but we see our work in, in, in encouraging growth, smart growth within this borough as very naturally aligned. Uh, not at all in conflict with, very naturally aligned with our work in, um, in tackling climate change. We see that shopping local helps reduce 
um, carbon emissions, uh, particularly those from transport as people walk and cycle to their corner shop, corner shops and uh, and, and um, as it helps produce last minute deliveries from internet shopping, if, if, if we are demanding more from our local shops. It was one of the reasons that we were so keen um, to uh, assist businesses within the borough over the summer months and being able to trade more easily on our streets. Um, some of you, if you live or have been to Northcote Road or Allwood Road, we, you, you will have seen that we um, allowed our, during social distancing restrictions, we allowed um, cafes, restaurants, bars to, to use some of the streets. And again, that to, to encourage you not only to support them as businesses, but also to, to help encourage um, um, shopping local and, and 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 getting to these getting to these places on on foot. Um, your your local um, your local your local community shops and, and, and businesses. Um, I mean, for every pound spent with a small or medium-sized business, as we know, 63p stays in the local economy compared with 40p for a large business. So our, our shop local campaign really urged residents to support um, local traders as we reactivate our high streets this summer. And I want to conclude really um, on the next slide by, by talking about what's next um, and what we have to look forward to. Councillor Gavinia mentioned our annual action plan, which we will be updating in, in the new year. Um, and we have areas where we want to um, we want to give some focus to. So we will be refreshing that action plan to deliver on our commitments. Um, it will include a focus on sustainable um, transport. Um, and as part of that, you know, as I've mentioned, electric vehicle use we think is going to be a really important part of the, of, of the coming years and what we do. Supporting the green economy is another priority of ours. Um, I mentioned the importance of community engagement, and we've been delighted not only to host events but to attend events and I know locally um, one of our membership organisations has consistently um, made the point about the importance of green skills and what should we do with it and, and, and they're important and we recognise that and we are incorporating that into our action. So we have already started conversations with organisations like South Thames College who can provide the skills needed for our residents to take advantage of opportunities in the green economy as they present themselves. Uh, and also support local businesses who are part of the green um, economy. We're very, we're, we're especially proud of those local businesses who are already making strides in this area, including local company Retrofit Works, who have been announced as being part of the government's task force for the green economy. We are blessed in Wandsworth with lots of experts and lots of people with skills and lots of businesses with real uh, drives. And, it, and, and indeed, we are working with Retrofit Works to continue to deliver the Green Homes Grant for the borough. Um, which will improve energy efficiency for some of the poorest households in the borough and the least efficient whole homes, helping them in their fight against fuel, fuel poverty. When more funding becomes available, we will bid for it. We are also helping deliver carbon literacy training for our staff, which we will launch in the new year, uh, including for our members, and we'll provide the climate change knowledge the organisation needs to drive forward our ambitions. So where we talk about influencers, where we talk about driving change, we want to do the same internally within our own organisation. And we will do more on communications and engagement, including events like this. Very finally, um, in our very final slide, and, and really, um, I suppose, picking up that key theme of influence, um, which I've I've noted through the speech, we are encouraging everybody this uh, taking part this week to make a personal pledge on climate change, um, to hold you know, yourself, ourselves, to account. Uh, at the end of the week, we will put these together and share them online anonymously. So we're not we're not we're not going to be pointing fingers, but but you know e even if that is a small commitment to recycle more, or it may be a bigger commitment in terms of changes that your organisation will make. We think this is a, a really important and useful way to remind ourselves that we need to do things and do things now and, and hopefully you'll get on board with that. Um, I hope you enjoy the summit and uh, thank you very much for attending and, and I look forward to um, hearing from Emma Jones in the coming moments. Thank you. Just had to remember to take myself off mute there, the uh, the key failing I keep doing in meetings. So um, thank you ever so much, Councillor Brin. We're now, as you 
said, going to hear from Emma Jones of Ashton, who's going to talk about the co-benefits of taking climate change action. Thank you so much, Emma. Well, good morning and thank you very much for inviting me to join you this morning. Um, it's fantastic to hear about all the wonderful work that's happening in Wandsworth. My name is Emma Jones and I'm from a, a, a climate change charity called Ashton which is passionate about enabling quicker action to tackle climate change. I'm actually talking to you from my home just over the border from Wandsworth in Lambeth, so I know the borough of Wandsworth well. Um, Ashton, if we move to the next slide, Ashton runs an annual awards, which looks to showcase the brightest and best uh, from around the world in terms of initiatives that are enabling quicker action to cut carbon. Um, in fact, one of our winners uh, from a few years ago was Wandsworth's very own Retrofit Works, which Councillor O'Brien uh, alluded to earlier. They're one of the absolute best in the whole country in terms of pioneering new ways of making homes more efficient and less carbon intensive. We also produce a range of resources to support councils in the UK in their ambitions to cut carbon. So if we move on to the next slide, uh, what we've really been working on recently is um, trying to slightly change the conversation around climate change. So often action to cut carbon is presented as having to give things up. We have to drive less, we have to eat less, we have to travel less, we have to consume less. But in actual fact, if done in the right way, action to cut carbon can bring about many other benefits which can have an enormously positive impact on the well-being of everyone. So we're just going to start off by showing you a short video that introduces this idea, um, which hopefully, if the technology works for us, will be teed up any moment now. And it's really just showing that we, we can all aspire to have a better life um, by mm -hmm. taking action to cut carbon. To avoid catastrophic climate change, we must radically cut carbon emissions, 80% of which are created by cities. But big, rapid change needs public support. Well-designed policies connecting the climate emergency with people's everyday needs create that support. People want better jobs, a thriving local economy, more green spaces, clean air, warm homes, and healthier travel. With the right policies, we can solve climate and social issues at the same time. Improving air quality, for example, reduces NHS costs, freeing up money to make public transport better or homes more energy efficient. Greater citizen support for climate action gives councils and governments the power to move faster, to cut carbon more radically as good results unlock new funding in lots of different budgets. The Ashton Code Benefits Toolkit helps city regions and local authorities take urgent action to stop the climate emergency and improve all our lives, now and in the future. So interestingly, that video was really um, designed for councils. It was designed to try and persuade councils that they need to take action in this area. And since we made that almost a year ago, so many councils, including Wandsworth, have declared climate emergencies and are de developing ambitious action plans to cut carbon in their areas. So what I'm going to do in the next 10 minutes or so is just talk you through four of the key benefits that can arise from cutting carbon. So if we move on to the next slide, we divided those, um, the one after that, sorry, that was the one for the video. Um, we've divided the, those other benefits into four. So we've got health, we've got resilience, we've got economic opportunity and growth, and we've got increased equity and social cohesion. So on the next slide, I'm gonna turn first of all to health. And I've seen quite a lot of questions already in the um, chat for this meeting about concerns about air quality, uh, and about how that impacts on health. Well, there are lots of different things. If we go back one slide. Um, there are lots of things that we can do to improve our health, which will also cut carbon at the same time. So if we think first of all about transport, we saw earlier that around a quarter of Wandsworth's carbon emissions come from transport. 
Much of that will be from petrol and diesel vehicles, which are also the main causes of poor air quality. So we know that as well as producing carbon dioxide, which is what causes climate change, these vehicles also produce noxious gases that damage our lungs. That's something we're all aware of in London. Air pollution actually kills around 10,000 people a year in London or 40,000 people a year in the UK. That's almost as many people as, as have been killed by COVID, but we really don't hear about it in the news very much. Another thing that contributes to poor health is lack of physical activity. So making it easier for people to walk or cycle or to use public transport will cut carbon and make our air cleaner. Of course, walking and cycling also makes people more active and that brings about health benefits too. So for example, in one of the Ashton Wynnard boroughs, that's Waltham Forest in North East London, the council has implemented a number of schemes to make it easier and safer for children to walk and cycle to school. And a study by King's College has found that as a result, children are fitter and they've actually calculated that as a direct impact of that, their life expectancy is increased by two to three weeks. Turning next to energy in the home, we saw earlier that energy in Wandsworth's homes, sorry, we're still on the previous slide. This is still all around health. Um, energy used in the home uh, accounts for 40% of Wandsworth's carbon emissions, so it's a massive chunk. Much of London's housing stock is old and not very energy efficient. We love our old Victorian terraces, but they leak energy through their thin walls and drafty windows. This means we have to use a lot of energy to keep them warm, which is bad for the planet and also expensive. And lots of people in London can't afford to keep their homes warm. That's bad for health you're more at risk of suffering a heart attack or stroke if your home is too cold, and it's bad for mental health too. Each winter, just in Wandsworth, around 40 people will die because they can't keep their home warm enough. Making homes more efficient through insulation and modern, easily controlled heating systems not only cuts carbon by reducing the amount of energy used, but makes them affordable to keep warm and makes people happier and healthier. And finally, on this slide, let's think about what we eat. So we know that eating a lot of meat and dairy is bad for us. It's bad for our cholesterol and puts us at a greater risk of heart disease. And you probably guessed that it's also bad for the planet. Around 12% of the UK's carbon emissions come from livestock. If we all changed our diets to comply with World Health Organization recommendations, which doesn't mean you have to become wholly vegan, but it does involve eating a lot more fruit and veg and less meat and dairy, we could dramatically cut carbon and live an average of eight months longer. So just to sum up on that slide, climate action can make us happier and healthier and increase our life expectancy. So moving on to the next slide, which is about economic opportunity. So we know that the economy is really struggling at the moment because of COVID <clears throat> and the green economy offers real potential for substantial growth in the next few years. We've heard that Wandsworth has the ambition to be the greenest borough, which is fantastic and that the green economy will form a key part of its economic growth following the pandemic. Now, government surveys have found that 65% of all 18 to 24 year olds, that's 3.7 million people in the UK, are interested in working in the green economy. And the government estimates that the green economy could create 2 million badly needed jobs between now and 2030. So just to give you a couple of examples, the UK cycle industry is worth three times more than the UK steel industry and employs twice as many people. Thousands of jobs could be created in London alone in making homes more efficient and putting in new low carbon heating. And there are also lots of jobs to be created in installing renewable energy. The top picture on this slide so it shows some apprentices in Lambeth who are being trained up by an organisation called Repowering to make and install solar panels. Repowering delivers renewable projects in some of the most deprived parts of London and has a real focus on upskilling young people so that they, they can find jobs in this sector. Another economic benefit of making homes more efficient is that households can save a lot of money. In a single street of 100 average homes, the combined spend on energy will be about £140,000 a year. Now about £28,000 a year could typically be saved just through putting in cost effective measures. This is money that could then potentially be spent in the local economy. That's £28,000 for a single street. 
So there's another fantastic scheme happening in Wandsworth. There's the Crew Community Energy Scheme, um, which is looking to help community buildings such as the DeVas building in, in Battersea to save money on their energy, which is also good for the economy. And another area where the economy can benefit is through cutting the cost of congestion and creating a better place to do business. The UK is the world's 10th most congested city and London is Europe's second most gridlocked city. UK drivers waste an average of 31 hours each year in rush hour traffic. That costs each motorist over £1,000 and costs UK businesses over £700 million each year. Reducing congestion will improve air quality, reduce these costs, while helping to create a more attractive place to do business. So just to sum up on this slide, climate action can help local businesses boom by creating nicer places to do business, and saving local people money, which they could then spend in their local economy. Moving on to the next slide, <coughs> we heard that there's an ask. Yeah, please forgive me, I've got a very croaky voice this morning. Hold on one second. Now, next we'll look at how action to cut carbon can create a fairer society. We heard earlier that Wandsworth has an ambition to be fairer. London is England's richest city, but it's also its poorest and its most unequal. And some of the poorest and most vulnerable people in London have the poorest air quality. And it's often those most affected by air pollution in the UK who are the least responsible for producing it. Vehicles passing through their neighbourhoods are primarily responsible for causing the pollution rather than travel by those living in the area. And they have the coldest homes. 40% of low income households have to face the choice between heating or eating, and they also have the least access to green space. Well, action to cut carbon can address all of these. So just some examples of projects that can cut carbon and create a fairer society. Mental health can be dramatically improved by providing easy access to green space. This picture at the top shows the mini park Lavender Gardens near Clapham Junction Station, which was recently spruced up by the council using money levied by the council on new developments. Plants in the park act as a carbon store to help limit climate change and gives people a, a space to, to access for exercise and recreation. School Streets is an initiative that's all about closing roads around primary schools at drop off and pick up times, protecting children's lungs from poor air quality and making it safer for them to walk or cycle to school. By encouraging people to walk or cycle to school rather than drive, this is also cutting carbon and it's helping young people be more physically active. I know Wandsworth has a very active school streets programme and that this is in place in a lot of the, the council's um, schools. And the bottom picture on this slide shows a green screen that's been installed in a school near me in East Dulwich. Uh, this is basically putting in living walls of plants around the edge of a playground where they border busy roads and they're designed to improve air quality in the school playground. You might think that a screen of ivy couldn't do an awful lot to protect young children's lungs, but amazingly, monitoring has shown that it can halve the level of pollution inside the playground. And again, the, carb the ivy acts in a very, very small way as a small carbon sink. And then in other parts of the UK, training is being offered to those working in carbon intensive industries such as coal power plants to help them transition to new jobs being created in the green economy, such as wind farms. There aren't too many job opportunities for in wind farms in Wandsworth, but the company Retrofit Works, uh, which was mentioned earlier and which is based in Wandsworth, has ambitious plans to train up and employ a lot of people to work in the home retrofitting industry. So to summarise this one, action to cut carbon can create a fairer society. And finally, moving on to the last co-benefit of resilience, um, we'll look at how action to cut carbon can make us more resilient to the impacts from our, climate, our changing climate. As Councillor Govindia said earlier, this is going to affect us all. We're going to have hotter summers and we're going to have more extreme weather events. It can also make us resilient to rising energy prices, Fuel bills have doubled in the last 10 years, while petrol prices are forecast to keep rising. And it can make us resilient to changes such as the introduction of electric vehicles. And we heard earlier about Wandsworth's plans to roll out EV charging points. Vulnerable groups of people, such as those affected by poverty, poor health and disabilities, will tend to experience disproportionate negative effects from extreme weather and climate impacts. But there are all sorts of actions that can cut carbon and increase resilience. 
So things like green spaces and the parklets we saw earlier, or the small uh, planted space you can see at the top of the slide here, um, they can reduce surface water runoff, thus limiting flooding risk. Planting trees like these ones at the bottom of the, of the slide, they create shade and can limit overheating and hot summers while also creating a carbon sink. Ensuring that walking and cycling is easy and providing a charging network for electric vehicles makes us all resilient to future increases in the cost of petrol. And reducing car use and travel costs through encouraging car sharing can also cut carbon emissions and protect people from the impact of rising fuel prices. And we heard earlier that Wandsworth has the highest rate of car club membership in the country. So again, in summary, action to cut carbon can make us all more resilient. So finally, onto my last slide. I hope I've managed to show you that taking action on climate can be all about gaining things and not just about giving things up. And I just want to leave you with a couple of the actions that we could all look at taking <clears throat> that can be some of the most beneficial to the climate, but also in other ways. So insulating homes, it cuts carbon, it can make us healthier, <clears throat> it can create jobs and save us money. It can improve equity by increasing access to affordable warmth, and it makes households more resilient to withstand future energy price rises. Similarly, cycling, it reduces fuel consumption and cuts carbon. It improves air quality and makes us more active. It saves us money on petrol and reduces congestion. It can create increased connections to the local community, and it also offers resilience to future increased fuel costs. And if you're interested in, in those two areas, there are um, talks as part of this programme of events that Wandsworth are putting on. I believe there's a talk tonight on greening your home at 6 p.m. And the, uh, the government is actually offering grants at the moment, which I'm sure will be covered in that talk to help you make your home greener and more, um, more energy efficient. And in terms of cycling, there's a sustainable transport session tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you ever so much. And now um, we've got some short time for um, for our questions and um, answers. Um, so thank you. We've been inundated with questions. We're trying to pick up themes and um, we'll pick up the themes in our action planning as well. And I would just reiterate what Emma said. We've seen quite a few questions on kind of transport, greening your home, um, waste and recycling. And we do have sessions on those over the next few days with specialists. So I would encourage you to, to sign up to those and we can make sure that those questions are covered there. So on to the, um, the first question which is, um, I'm going to ask Councillor O'Brien first, which is, please don't forget the problem of air pollution. What measures does Wandsworth plan to improve air quality? And that's Councillor O'Brien. Um, sure, thank you. Um, th thank you for the, the question. Um, so, sorry, Councillor O'Brien, I think maybe you need your video on. There we go. Then Amy can send you live. I, lo I love, we've got to love technology today. We ready to go, Amy? We're on. Thank you. Thank you. So I was speaking too soon. Um, no, thank you for the question. Um, the, some of you will know that, that we have an air quality action plan, which is actually due to expire um, um, next year. So um, the, the question is very timely because we are working right now on updating an air quality strategy and action plan to go to um, the committee in 2021. The, the timing works well, actually, because it comes so soon after us launching West for us to look at this again. Uh, one, and once this is a, um, agreed, we'll we'll look uh, as part of that at um, mechanisms for working at community group and residents to take actions forward. Um, we we have made some progress already on on air quality. We've secured funding for a cleaner villages project in Wandsworth and also a, a business low emission neighbourhood in Nine Elms. So um, we have made some progress, but, but it, it is, and, and I say this as a, as a parent of two young children, it, it, is, a, it is a really key issue for, um, um, for us here in, in Wandsworth. Um, for, for those who've asked questions on air quality and are interested, um, you, you can also look at um, uh, our air quality um, reports and, and, and generally work being conducted on air quality on the wandsworth.gov.uk um, website under the environment section under um, pollution. You'll find air quality and reports which hopefully can um, give you more detail than I'm able to in, in a few short moments.
<laughs> Sorry, I was on mute and I could see Amy, who's our producer behind the scenes, frantically saying, Claire, you're on mute. I am so sorry. <laughs> Emma, do you have anything that you'd like to add around kind of actions that can be taken by communities or groups around air quality? Well, I, I know the issue. Of... Sorry, going too soon. Apologies, we're, we're all too keen to talk, so we start talking before we're live. Um, as I alluded to in my presentation, it's really about getting people out of their own private vehicles. Um, where possible, getting people to walk and cycle, that's obviously the best option because there are zero emissions from walking and cycling. Um, and where they can't walk or cycle, uh, get them using electric vehicles or public transport. I know quite a lot of people think that electric vehicles will be the, the answer to all our air pollution problems, but they, they really won't. They will cut um, pollution a lot, but you do still actually get quite a lot of particulates from electric vehicles, amazingly just from the tyres and the brake pads. And obviously there's still a danger on the roads and they can still cause congestion. But obviously not everybody will be able to walk and cycle with the best will in the world. Some people won't be able to do that. But I think the role for, for councils working in partnership with Transport for London is to make London as friendly as possible uh, for pedestrians and for cyclists. And for communities really to get behind that and do everything they can um, locally to to encourage and enable measures that will make it easier for people to walk and cycle. Got the hang of it now, although I'm probably tempting fate. Um, our next question again is this is to um, Councillor Brin. So um, you said the community in Wandsworth should hold us to account. Will the council establish a consultation body to help this happen in a meaningful way? Um, thank you. I mean, that, that's an excellent question. I'm, I'm glad somebody's asked it. Um, we're serious about that, and we've um, we've invited the conversation, I and mean, we've had we've we've engaged in a number of events or individual meetings or attended meetings uh, over the year. Um, and you know, invariably, those meetings, even if their purpose is something else, turns into um, a, a session on holding the council to account. What is the council going to do about X? I think um, we um, take a pretty clear view in terms of holding us to account, which is that the council is itself a, um, a, a local democratic institution and through our committees uh, and indeed the council meeting itself, we already have structures in place to allow us formally to be held um, to account. And we think that's the proper way to do so because it's through our committees that our action specific actions in different areas will be published and brought forward and um and, and and that you know and that and that is where we will transparently be held to account at the same time we will continue to engage with groups in many different ways but we, we what we really want to avoid is um creating lots of different new consultative bodies which don't already exist that really just turn into an opportunity to navel gaze between us, because that the reality is that the body, the groups that will be involved in that are already actively involved. And it goes back to the point I was making at the beginning. We really, really want all of us, um, we will be held to account, we will continue to listen, but to really look out to those who are not already involved and to try and work together a bit more to, to influence that change. And, and we will continue to do that. And, you know, in, indeed, as I hopefully I've indicated in my speech, there are, there are things that are part of the action plan. Um, for example, what we intend to do on green jobs that are, there is a direct line from the meetings we've had with groups and individuals on our plan that have, end, that have ended up in put um, as an action. Um, so we, 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 we are being held to account, we are listening and we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Um, thank you. And then um, I think this might unfortunately be the last question, but we'll try and fit another one in if we can. This one's to you, Councillor of India. It's from uh, one of our, <coughs> sorry, I've caught Emma's cough, uh, one of our participants. I was unable to register for the session on high streets. 
Um, I, it was interesting that it was really full early on. How will you enable businesses to get involved in um, tackling climate change, if not part of the original session? Um, so I think it's more about that question is more about how we can support businesses to to tackle um, to tackle climate change. Thank you very much for that excellent question. I mean, the two, two things I'd say. One is that there is a very strong relationship between one's council and its business community. And we have sort of collaborated over a number of issues and green issues is not you know, it's not immune from that collaboration. In fact, the Chamber of Commerce is quite a leading part in these sessions uh, across the, the whole period of the summit. And over COVID, our relationship with the Chamber of Commerce is even further strengthened. Part of what Councillor Prince said earlier about shopping local and supporting our local businesses is a two-way process. We support them and they in, in turn earn our support by going green. So there's a question of encouragement, support and advice. My colleague, uh, Councillor uh, Richard Jones, who leads on economic development in the borough, is strengthening our relationship with the, with the business community. And the three bids, in the Clapham Junction, Putney and Wands Town, the three bids are also part of our network of support of local authority uh, lo or local businesses and working together to, to do that. And of course, if there are any further ideas about how we can do better or more, to support businesses to go green, remain green, and set themselves challenging targets to go green, you know, by all means talk to us. And of course, we, we will want to support that and encourage it. Um, thank you ever so much. Um, and we've just uh, just a quick plug for um, a session that we've got on Friday that's actually been run by the Chamber of Commerce that businesses can sign up to. Um, and that's information about kind of becoming green and being greener as well. So if you weren't able to sign up to one of um, our how to get involved sessions, do try and sign up to um, that one. Now we've got a, a couple of minutes. Um, just a couple of minutes left. I'm just going to try and squeeze in one last quick question. Um, I'm going to go to um, Councillor O'Brien and it's just a quick one. We've had several questions about the council's pension fund um, and how it relates to our ambition. So I just wondered if you could just quickly address that for us. Uh, yes, of course. Um, we, it's good questions. We have a significant pensions fund. I think one of the, the, the really nice features of um, our pensions governance is um, that it is um, it, it is one of the few areas where we very consistently see great collabor collaboration by all political parties. Um, it, it, it is it is um, it is an area which is generally devoid of some of the more um, sort of capital, P, uh, capital P political interactions. And um, when it comes to climate change, this is you know absolutely in evidence. Um, during this year, we, we have in each nearly every meeting that we've had this year, I'm actually a member of that committee, um, progressed work on our pension fund approach to climate change. Um, we, as a committee, instructed um, Mercer to conduct an asset allocation review with a view to what we can do um, to support um, our climate change change objectives um, overall um, and that is now very well advanced and um, we hope to see the effects of that and that put into place in, in the coming months and years but but it's um, that is that is you know, very much part of our plans and um, absolutely something that you will um, see us taking action on uh, in respect of our pension fund. Sorry, I'm smiling because I, I keep getting thumbs up from my producer to say I'm, I'm OK to go live. So um, I really hope that you found um, today informative um, and that you've learnt more about what the council is doing on climate change and also that you're kind of inspired to do things and take individual action um, to help us as a borough tackle climate change. Um, throughout the whole of the this week, we're asking um, people to write their pledges in the chat. So that's things that you'll do differently as a result of um, of attending
including the climate change summits and the things that it's made you think about. So if you have a chance now, it'd be really fantastic if you could um, write your pledges. And just to say that all sessions for the rest of the week, apart from our how to get involved, which is already full, are still able to um, accept people to attend. So if you've got anything and you're interested, we've got the uh, recycling session at lunchtime today and greening your homes um, this evening. So it just remains for me to say thank you to our speakers. Thank you ever so much for, for speaking this morning and, and coming along with us on this team's live journey. And thank you to you, all our residents, for, for signing in and being so committed to take action on climate change. And hopefully we'll see you at our other sessions. Thank you very much.